everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Space Marine Adventures Doomsday Countdown, latest in the Space Marine Adventures line of sort of like um, standalone uh, adventure boxed games uh, available for major booksellers across the US and the UK. Now, um, I'm a huge fan, it's no secret, I've done the last two, actually Labyrinth of the Necrons and um, Rise of the Orcs, huge fan of these Space Marine Adventure Box games. They take me back to the um, quad pack of different bookshelf games that were available in the 90s uh, from Games Workshop, and honestly, some of the most interesting, like, mechanical gameplay things Games Workshop are doing right now, they are doing in these games. Uh, this is a procedurally generated one to three player board game. You, all you need is what's in the box. It's all push fit models. Uh, you're going to get three um, Primaris Marines that are actually the Dark Imperium like paint set Marines. So it's three intercessors, one of whom's kind of like an unarmed, like not special sergeant. A guy with an Auspex and a guy with a bolt rifle. And then you get the cool cultist box um, that was available as an expansion for Blackstone Fortress. So you have a bunch of really nice miniatures. Um, and that's kind of what this uh, has been an excuse to release over the last little while. Uh, the previous two uh, came with Space Brain Heroes. Uh, Space Brain Heroes 1 in Labyrinth of the Necrons and Space Brain Heroes 2 in The Rise of the Orcs. Now this does do something that was a kind of a bugbear of mine in the first two Space Brains where the or Space Brain Adventure Box games where they used tokens for the bad guys, for the Necrons and the uh, Orcs. This one actually has bad guy models in it. So you get a full set, good guys, bad guys, a procedurally generated sort of dungeon crawl adventure where you're trying to stop a doomsday device. Uh, you can either play it as a single like one-off mission where you try and stop the doomsday device, or you can play it as a linked game of our three, a linked campaign of three narrative missions, which is what I'm going to do um, as the ba space friends basically infiltrate this like chaos held stronghold and try and deactivate the device. So I'm going to show you the table. We'll show you how to set up a game and we'll get this underway. There it is, painted up in all its glory, Space Marine Adventures Doomsday Countdown. Um, a one to three player, 30 minute uh, co-op play where you're playing against the game, board game. Uh, and here are the components. So what do we got? Well, we've got a Space Marine squad, a little like, um, like intercessor kind of like kill team of three guys. We have Brother Psycharon, who's got an Auspex for rerolling ones and twos to hit if you're uh, in line of sight of him when you're targeting with your bolt rifle. Brother Sergeant Artellus, he has heroic bearing. Once during each of Artellus' activations, after he picks a move or attack action, pick a Space Marine including Artellus, uh, that uh, Space Marine can make a free move or attack action. So instead of having three actions per turn, he almost has four. And then Brother Ghislaine, uh, he has Hammer Wrath. He moves into a square holding a single cast cultist. He just crushes him to death. That's the most Space Marine thing I've ever. He just tramples the guy. Uh, and then um, you've got some other core stats on here, like their roll to hit when they're killing and how many wounds they can take before they die. Over here we've got some cultists, seven cool cultist models from that Blackstone Fortress sprue. Uh, we got four with auto guns. We've got one with a heavy stubber, one with a grenade launcher, and one who's the champion with a uh, auto pistol and chain sword. Auto pistol has, or the champion has unholy fortitude, can take two wounds instead of one before they die. The um, grenade launcher, when he makes an attack against the space marine, he makes an attack against everyone in the square because he's firing frag grenades. And the heavy just has a better roll to hit with his stubber. Uh, these guys, they just, they do damage on fives and are generally terrible because they're cultists. Cultist activation deck, which I really like. Instead of having a simple activation program, there's a deck of possible things they could do, which puts some uncertainty in there. In That's really important in um, single player and co-op games because the more predictable the enemy AI is, the more or the less, I would say the less replayable the game is because the more you figure out its inherent weaknesses. So having a deck like this of like possible actions they can take is really nice because it gives some longevity to playing the game because it'll be different every time you play it. You get your War Gear deck for the Space Marines. The, in a solo play game, you get three of these cards. There's ways to get new ones, but generally speaking, they just give you additional abilities per game. Some D6s, uh, some wound counters, some activation markers for your Space Marines, some sealed tokens. These are for the hatches that the um, cultists can emerge from. Three special tiles. You have your elevator, your um, command codes right here, which is a little like briefcase, and the Doomsday Device, which is going to explode. Uh, you have your actual tiles for the game, which I'll get through when we actually deploy them and then your setup ones you'll notice the setup tiles actually have a different backing than the actual um tiles for um deploying the dungeon and these are always deployed the same way so this is the initial setup this is your drop zone for your marines and these three tiles uh, are always adjacent before you start dealing with the actual rest of the dungeon it's your rule book doomsday countdown it's handily laid out um gives you sort of like an inventory that i just did out loud 
in the actual thing. The object of the game is to try and deactivate the Doomsday device uh, and survive, get back to the elevator. Now, of course, for the Space Marines um, in the campaign, there will be three different objectives if you're playing not a one-off game. Um, and then setting up the board. So there, you can see here's our entrance tile and our special tiles. Now you divide all the rest of the tiles together into two equally large stacks. And normally what you do is you would shuffle the elevator tile into the first stack, the um, codes tile into the second stack, and then um, shuffle them all together. Put the stack one on top of stack two. So you always have the elevator in the first stack, the codes in the second stack, and place the doomsday device on the bottom. Now, as we are playing the um, campaign setting, for our setup purposes, these won't be used. These will happen later in the campaign in Mission 2 and Mission 3, and we're just gonna shuffle the elevator stack. So I'm not gonna try and shuffle these uh, on camera because that would be a terrible idea. There's lots of ways of doing it. I highly recommend you don't try and do it like a deck of cards. Just do what I'm doing here and just make it into multiple piles and then just stack, restack the piles. It's way easier on them. And more importantly, your tiles won't get dog-eared because what can tend to happen is that your tiles, as you try and shuffle them, the edges get worn down. They are just cardstock after all. This is probably a more gentle way of shuffling the cards or the tiles going over. So I'm gonna shuffle the other tech and obviously I, I, doing it playing card style with a uh, camera in my right hand would probably have been even worse. But this way, we'll get a nice procedurally generated dungeon that will be different, hopefully roughly every time. And you can spend a long time doing this for the purpose of showing you guys. I'm just gonna show you the, the gentle way of doing this. And then stack two goes on top of stack one. I okay, said so the bottom stack would have had the codes in it. And then when this was stacked, we would then put this on the bottom, but because we're playing the campaign missions, right now we're just trying to stop cultists from pouring it everywhere. Before we create the table though, we need to put out our war gear cards. In a normal solo game, you're gonna get six. In a campaign though, you get nine. And they're usually divided up amongst the number of players. So it'd be six for a one player game, uh, three each for a two player game, or um, two each for a three player game. And we're gonna get nine, but these do not replenish over the course of the game. Now these can do things that like give you extra actions, remove wounds from people. Uh, so this one is uh, plus one to hit for the next attack action. This one is remove a wound when they kill somebody. This one is remove a wound after they do anything. Uh, plus two to hit, plus one to hit, plus two to hit if they don't move and they're not next to somebody, plus one to hit all the time. Blind grenades put next to the battlefield. Each time a chaos cult just makes an attack action, they're minus one to hit. Uh, Fear the righteous. You can terrify someone and stun them. Uh, shrug a wound. Uh, this one is when you're slain. If you slay a chaos cult with an action, pick another chaos cult in the same square and kill them. Play this card after a space marine makes a move action or attack action. Pick another space marine. They can make a move or attack action. And then that's it. So those are our nine for the course of the game. I'm kind of trying to stack them by type here. Start creating the battlefield. So starting with the um, topmost open doorway, we start placing tiles and we keep going clockwise and the sort of um, evil chaos base is built concentrically out. And this can lead to dead ends, obviously. So like for instance, this one is a dead end. But if you can avoid making a dead end, you have to. So you keep placing them, hopefully not touching so that they dead end out. And we go around building a laser gate, building our zones here. And so it's to here, which then just sort of like, I guess it goes like that. Make all of the open doorways that were there at the beginning. Uh, we'll go like that, so at least this won't be fully wasted. <laughs> and now that we've gone all the way around once, for the original doorways, we start doing the new ones, starting at the top left again. And we build this out until we've built the battlefield. Oh, there's the elevator, first spawn point that we have to seal. Oh, there's the next spawn point we have to seal, but it's further away. The laser gate got a corner. This corner got a three-way junction. There's a switchback. Another spawn point way up here. Uh, and you do do each one. So this one's got a laser gate. Uh, down to here now for a straight line. I'll we'll move this up. Then it's a switchback. Maybe we can have these actually join up if we go around far enough. We probably won't. I think we're gonna run out of tiles first. That's a Y junction. That's gonna be a corner. Actually, we could go like this first, actually. And then we do the next one over. 
This will be on a straight line. And you can see that the battlefield kind of builds out differently every single time because it can vary dramatically. And these end corridors are important because cultists can come in from them. There we go. Marines go into the deployment square in the middle, and this is the only time you can have three uh, Marines in a square. And we start deploying cultists, starting at the top once again, and with the special, so the leader, grenade launcher, and heavy stubber, and then we keep placing them until they've all been placed. Typically it means there's going to be three auto guns with the leader, and an auto gun with each of the other specialists. I like putting the one with the ammo crate with the one with the stubber, because it just looks appropriate. And that's it. Our activation tokens are here. Ready to put on a marine once they've activated. We place the doomsday tile in a convenient spot where we count down our 20 turns before the world ends and we lose. Wound counters to one side. Sealed tokens will be important later on. D6 is for fighting. And we're on to the story for this mission. The Space Marines have located the Chaos Cultists base at the heart of the Hive City. The squad must breach the main chambers and find the elevators so they can make their way down to the Doomsday device before the alarm can be raised. So these are played in a grand total of five stages. Um, and this first stage, we're just trying to seal with a seal action each of these uh, entryways for the cultists and get back to the elevator. And if we survive and do so, we'll make it to stage two. Turn itself is four repeating steps. Step one is a single Space Marine Marine activates. Step two is we flip an, flip an action card for the cultists and either one or all of them perform that action. Step three is any um, hidden guys, so the, the dead guys basically come back first on their spawn points and then on any open uh, doorway at the edges they can funnel back onto even if we seal them all. And stage four is the doomsday clock goes down by one. So initially it looks like the marines have lots of activation control here but you'll realize quickly because only one of them goes at a time all of the out of activation actions are super important like the sarge can make you do and this uh the 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 three marines are basically having the cultists go three times uh over the course of a round once they've all activated you remove their activation tokens and you keep on going until either the doomsday clock goes off or you achieve your mission objective step one a marine will activate now they can do multiple different actions during the course of a turn they can move they can so they can move into adjacent tile they can attack which is to roll an attack dice equal to their attack value that's something they can draw line of sight to and line of sight is only straight lines you can't see around corners uh, it doesn't have to be adjacent but it does have to be a, basically like a line between them and their target um, they can make a seal action to seal a hatch if they're on that square. Uh, later on, they can also extract the data codes and place them to uh, deactivate to the Doomsday device. And those are the most common actions. Each Marine gets three actions every time they activate, and every Marine's only gonna activate once. I think we're gonna start with Brother Ghislaine. Now, his special skill is if he moves into a square with only a single cultist, he crumps them. So we're gonna go one AP to move, two AP to move, three AP to make an attack. I really want to kill this heavy stubber. Nine cards, I feel like I have a budget of three per mission, and the faster I get these hatches closed, the, the harder it's gonna be for cultists to come get me. I really want to get this one done so I can start moving towards the last two I have to get to. So I'm gonna play Martial Precision. Uh, no, so I'm gonna play Emperor's Wrath. Add one of the score for the attack roll to see if I kill somebody, because I really want to kill this guy. So let's see if I hit them. Two plus now instead of three plus. I rolled a one. Not let me use my second one, which is martial precision, pick another cast skeleton in the same square and kill them. So that was my third action, which means I'm all done. So now we flip uh, into step two. Oh, sorry, I should have mentioned too. Uh, I can't end a move on a pitfall, and if I move into one of these, I don't know, one or two, I take damage from the, the laser gates. So that could be dangerous later on. Chaos Cult is activate. I flip the card, I read what it says. Um, it could apply to all of them, it could apply to just one of them. Take them down, each Chaos Cultist makes an attack action. Okay, so that means they will attack any square, like whatever the closest Marine is that they can see. These guys obviously don't have line of sight to anybody because they can't see around corners, but these two can both see Brother Ghislaine. So the first uh, thing we'll do is we'll have the heavy attack, four plus, he'll stubber Brother Ghislaine, who's not doing great. Well, he misses at least. This dice is getting cut. Uh, and then the um, regular initiate with the Auto gun on a five plus, five or six, also misses. Well, these dice are terrible. That's resolved. So the next step after that is um, we're gonna reinforce. If there's any dead cultists, they would first uh, appear on any vacant hatch and then on any vacant doorway. Um, and the fourth step is the doomsday clock goes down to 19. Right then, Sarge, I think you need to help out here. This is, all this is bad. We need to seal this stuff. So I think Sarge is gonna move. He's gonna go one, two, and then th uh, three to make a shot. 
We'll target the grenade launcher, because obviously he's more dangerous. And miss! A lot of nothing happened with these Marines. Um, now because he made that action, he can do Heroic Bearing. Each time during one of Artillius' activations, after he makes a move or attack action, pick a Space Marine, including Artillius. That Space Marine can make a free move or attack. And what I'm gonna do is have Ghislaine go, and he'll take a shot with his Bolter into that uh, Stubber again. Three plus. Finally, we killed him. So he's toast. Because of that, uh, I've got the ability to also play Martial Precision. Uh, play this uh, after a Chaos Cultist is slain as a result of a Space Marine's attack action. Pick another Chaos Cultist in the same tile and kill them too. So there's my second one. We're going to kill this guy and have him be done. I could save that actually if I wanted to. And instead of using that, I could use... We march from a Karag. Play this uh, card after a Space Marine makes a move action or attack action. Pick a Space Marine and make a free move action. And then I wouldn't even need to roll a die. I can save that one for later and he can just boof crush this guy, and also be standing on this to keep something from spawning on it. Because his special rule is Hammer of Wrath, once during each of his activations. When making a move action, Glane can move into a tile that contains a single Chaos Cultist, and if he does so, they're slain. During his activation, he didn't activate, so he can't Hammer Wrath that guy. Well, I guess we'll use Martial Precision instead. Martial Precision instead of We March from a Crag, because that has to be during his activation. Uh, and that's the Sarge done. So next action for the Cultist, closing in. Each Chaos Cultist makes a move action. So they'll all move one close to the nearest Marine. They're already as close as they can be. Reinforcements. Uh, you're going to show back up over here, and then you're going to show up in a doorway. And 18 left on the Doomsday Clock. Flavis, please. Okay, so the only person that has activated now is Psycharen. Uh He's just going to go and take a step one, take a step two, and then shoot for three. Try and blast that guy. Three plus. Uh, he'll blast the... Grenade launcher. Now his special rule is he can reroll ones or twos during his activation. Actually, anybody can reroll ones and twos. And we'll kill that guy. This is for So all of the Marines are now activated, and it's the Cultists. Berserk Rush. Each Cultist makes an attack action. If they cannot make an attack action, they make a move action. So the Heavy Stubber is going to blast on Galen again on a 4+. plus. No, nope, he's okay. Uh, he can't attack, so he makes a move. He'll make an attack against, let's say, the Sarge on a 5+. plus. Oh, he wounds him. Bam! Right in the Brother Sergeant Artellus. You guys can't attack, so they'll all just make a move closer. And we're down to 17 turns left. So because we started with everyone having an activation token, they all get removed. And we get to choose someone to go. Well, Ghislaine's going to go, mostly just for the fun of using Hammer of Wrath. He goes, shabam! He's going to crush this guy with his own body. He's just sick of being shot at. Uh, he'll spend his second action to take a shot with his Bolter into that... Cultist, three plus, and smoke him. And then his third action, he is going to, oh sorry, this guy would have come back. Uh, that doorway already had one, it would be this doorway down here to regenerate him this turn. Uh, and his third action, he's going to seal this hatch. So we have one out of three sealed. Okay, so we're on to him being done. And it's an action for the cultists. Cultists go, fire frenzy, each cultist makes two attack actions. So he'll get to attack twice into Sarge, so five plus. Nope, five plus. No, nope. we're okay. Uh, everybody else idles, because they can't perform the action. Reinforcements, can't show up on this hatch anymore. So doorway reinforcements, and then open doorway over here, so there's one on each side. One of the doorways closest to a marine, if they can. Uh, and then that was them done. So, 16 turns remain. All right, Sarge, I feel like you could just smoke this guy. So I think you will. You're going to blast on a 3+, plus, but you can reroll 1s and 2s right now because Psycharen's there with his Auspex and you can also see that guy. Convenient. Okay, let's just change dice because I hate these 1s these and 2s I'm rolling. Oh my god! I guess you try again. Uh, second action. And you smoke that guy. Now you're going to take the free heroic bearing action yourself to make a move, and then your third actual action, you'll seal this hatch. So two are now sealed. You've now activated, so cultist activation. Ambush, remove uh, the cultist that's furthest from any surviving space frame and place them adjacent and they make an attack action. So he'd be furthest and coolest. Uh, we'll place him next to Sarge, and he'll blast with the grenade launcher on a five, six. Bang! No. This is Brother Psycharen. We've got one more to try and get rid of. So I think we go one, two, three, 
two. We're going to shoot with our bolter, three plus, try and kill a cultist. We do. We just hold the line. He's not wounded yet, so he should be able to survive whatever these cultists do to him. Uh, so new action, Let's see what the cultists do. Howling advance, move, then attack. So move, attack, move. Shooting Brother Galane with the heavy stubber again. Misses him. Uh, can't move, attacks with a grenade launcher on a five plus against the Sarge. Artelis is wounded again, oh no. Mm, yeah, we've still got our, we can shrug a wound. Give it anybody next turn. Uh, and then these guys can't move, but they can attack. So the heavy stubber, or sorry, the, the guy with the stub gun, or auto gun, misses. And the sergeant, who can take two wounds without dying, wounds. And wounds Brother Psycharon. 14 turns left. All right, well, anybody can activate now. I feel like Brother Galane's the safest to not activate, because Artelis is going to die otherwise. Mm, he's going to use Gene Rot Healing after he may... Oh, it's if I kill somebody. Place card after a cultist is slain. Let's see if I can do it. Three blasts, we'll shoot our bolter into this uh, guy with the grenade launcher. Oh, sorry, we forgot reinforcements. Uh, one would arrive here, because it's unblocked. And then one would arrive, this one's closest here. Long advance. Uh, so yeah, we'll shoot our bolter into that guy with the grenade launcher. And miss. Shoot him again. And hit, and kill him. And then we'll play Sign of the Primarch to remove a wound. Third action, we'll just move again. And our Talos is done. Hopefully nobody dies. So, new turn. Hidden mining charges. Roll six out of dice for each surviving Marine. On a one or two, the Space Marines wounded. Oh no, the cultists are getting crazy and they're detonating the base around them to try and kill the Marines. So for Brother Galane, he's okay. For Sergeant Artellis, the world doesn't explode. And for Brother Psycharon, no, he takes a wound, he's on two. Well, that's not great. Now, I, if these guys die, they do make it to the next mission as long as they succeed, but they're wounded in the next mission. So there isn't, there is some legacy stuff here, but it's not all or nothing if I lose one of them this game. It just means my success level is lower than normal. That being said, I think Sykara needs to go. Oh, I forgot the Sarge could do something with his last action. I could have made it a shot actually for free, which I will. I'll, I'll use my um, heroic bearing to take a shot with Sykara and he'll kill this cultist, which means it would have come back here, 13 turns remaining. The mine charges went off. Um, so Zykaren can go now, if he wants. I think he's gonna try and kill that cultist leader, because we need to seal this last thing before we can leave. Get shot with his bolter, three plus. Reroll, because of his Auspex. And to do a first wound to him, her rather. And then uh, second shot, he'll do it again. And reroll for his Auspex. And kill her. So she's destroyed. Third AP, I think he takes a step. I think fourth AP, we're gonna march from a crag. We need him to move again. To there. AP, and then he gets to make a move action afterwards. And I think we will play... Do I think I'm gonna get attacked again? I might, I got, if, if Sykaren dies, it's bad. We'll see. Delane's next. Howling advance, move action, followed by an attack action. So, four plus. Nope, doesn't wound. Uh, over here, move action. Five plus, can he wound Ghislaine? He does, oh, Ghislaine's wounded too. Move action, they're immune to the laser traps. Uh, move action followed by an attack action, so attacks. Oh no, we have to play it, enhance fortitude. Uh, play if I'd be wounded, I'm not wounded. This guy, he might just kill him. On a five plus, he's gonna kill Sykaren. No, he drops Sykaren, Sykaren's out. Well, it's time for Brother Ghislaine to go. He's just gonna move. One, two, three. And be finished. Our cultist action is blitz, make an attack action, and then a move action. So nobody can see, so they'll just move, move, move. And then it's reinforcements. Actually, these reinforcements would have arrived last turn. Here. No, nope, closest to a marine. Would have been here. And then probably here, because Sykaren was done. Here first, actually. So she would have shown back up over there. <laughs> Lurched back to life, and then he would come on over here. With 12 turns remaining. Okay, so we remove our activation counters because everybody's gone now. Oh, and these guys would have moved. Brother, mm, Brother Gawain needs people to come to him. So I think we go with the Sarge. And he's just going to move one, two. And then use his... Somebody else gets to make an action to move. Actually, he could have gone... One, two, th 
Mm, one, two, three, and made an attack. No, I think we just go one, two, and then use it to move him. Is heroic bearing. All right, cultist action. Howling advance, move followed by an attack. So it moves to here, attacks Galane on a five. Whoa, wounds him. He's down to two. Uh, these guys move, move, move followed by attack. All right, so these are all into Sarge. Three five ups. First one. Nope, second one. Whoa, wounds him. He's got one left. Third one. Doesn't kill him. Everybody's got one wound left. Well, oh my god. I think we go with Ghislaine. Well, we have to go with Ghislaine. He'll move one. Two to shoot the Sarge. Wounds her. Three to shoot a cultist. Nope. Play blind grenades. Uh, everyone's minus one to hit. You're gonna die otherwise. Uh, I guess I could remove a wound counter. After that. And then... Play that after he activates. We've Gene Raw Healer. I have two cards left. I'm blowing through all my cards here. Uh, let's see what the cultists do. Closing in. Sorry, we were at 11 turns left. Uh, closing in. Everybody makes a move action. So moves, moves, moves. They're already there. Forcements because nobody's dead. Uh, I guess we go with. If Galen hits with both, he could just step on the last one and clear the way. Or we could go with the Sarge, kill two, and then have Galane just step on them. That's what we do. Sarge's gonna shoot. Uh, he's gonna fire. Three plus to kill that champion. Nope. Three plus to kill that champion. Yes. Three plus to kill that champion again. Nope. The free action to kill that uh, regular cultist. He does. Last activation card before we reshuffle. shuffle. Tie the traitors. They all move two. Uh, so one, two. One, two, already stuck there. Reinforcements arrive, spawns, and then closest would still be here, so spawns. 10 turns remain, we're halfway through. I'm almost dead with everybody. Okay, uh, let's go with, I guess, the Sar. No, we have to go with Brother Glane. Uh, he is just going to crush this guy with his charge move with impact hits. For one, two to go over here, three to shoot that Sar. Winner. Yes, we get one out of two. That's Glane done. Let's see what the cultists do. Howling advance, move followed by attack. Oh god, I think the Sarge is about to die. Does the cultist leader wound Ghislaine? No. Uh, does this cultist move in and wound Ghislaine? On a five? No. He's stubborn on the Sarge, does it kill him? No. Fives? No. Uh, auto gun on fives? No. This cultist can't move in, because they can't go in the square. So no line of sight. Oh, Sarge, you made it. Sergeant Artilis is gonna go. Uh, gonna take a shot into this heavy stubber, because it's super dangerous. And kill it. Oh, sorry. This would have reinforced here. Nine turns left. So the heavy stubber is dead. No. Second AP, shoot again. Kill another one. AP, shoot again. And miss. I think we play Fear the Righteous. No, we can do that after. I think what we do is we play the Make a Free Attack and he's gonna make a free attack onto the cult leader. And she dies. Now brother Arcturus is done, or Artelis is done. And let's see what the cultists do. Ambush, furthest goes to closest. Uh, so you're one, two, you're one, two. I guess we move you to here. And you make an attack. Five, six. Nope, you miss. And you can't come on over there, so you come on over here. You'll come on over here, and then you'll come on probably over here. All right, down to eight turns remaining. We need to split the party, I think, now. And we're almost, we're almost good. <laughs> you need to seal the deal. So Glenn's gonna activate, do your bull rush for one, crush this guy, seal the last portal for two, and then three to move back. What's it look like? Tie to traders, they all make two move actions. So move one, one, two, one, two, one, two, uh, you reinforce at the closest point, which is here. And then there's seven turns left. Oh, this is gonna be rough. Close, okay. Um, it's gotta be Sarge. You're gonna make an attack action, try and kill this grenade launcher. Three plus, we got it. 
Second attack action, try and kill this auto gun. You got it. Uh, third to move, fourth to move again with heroic bearings. So we block that. What do the cultists do? We're almost in the elevator. Blitz! Attack followed by move. Oh no. Does this champion kill the Sarge? Five plus. <laughs> oh no, Taurus is down. Uh, nobody else can go, so they all just take a step. Uh, he could attack actually on a five. Nope, the last one on a five. Oh, wounds him, he's got one wound left. Takes a step, the reinforcements arrive. Closest here, next closest here. And it's all you, you got one wound left. You're gonna go one, two, three. And you're just gonna activate every round right now. Call this do. Fire Frenzy, they take two attack actions. Nobody can see me. Oh my God, and that's it. I get to go, well sorry, we go five, and then it would've been four, and he's gonna go one, two, and be in the elevator. And we made it out with one wound remaining on Glenn, and we've used all but two of our cards. Now we get to rate our victory. Now in a normal game, we'd have to have um, sealed every tunnel and have the Doomsday device have a deactivation token on it and have each surviving space print on the elevator tile. We rate our victory. We had one bloodied survivor. Your squad suffered high heavy casualties in the execution of your mission. Though your efforts saved countless lives, duty all too often comes at a high price. Stage two, the Doomsday Deactivation. The space screens have reached the center of the Chaos Cultist's lair, deep in the bowels of the Hive City. They must now get the deactivation codes of the Doomsday device and disable it before it's too late. Set up a game following the rules on page four to five with the following changes. We retain control of our same space marines. When the space marines are placed at the entrance tile, each space marine that was slain in stage one is now wounded, so I have one wound on them. Do not deal warrior cards to the players when setting this up. The players retain any unused ones. If the players wish, they can discard one to remove a wound counter. This mission, after a space marine has been activated, the players complete stage two if the following three criteria have been met. Each surviving space marine is on the elevator tile. The Doomsday device has deactivation codes on it, and each tunnel has a sealed tunnel token on it. And so now for this second round, the Doomsday device, obviously we put everything into two equally sized piles. We're going to mix the deactivation codes into pile two, the elevator into pile one, and this Doomsday device will go on the bottom. And so there you go. We'll see you for episode two, the second stage in two weeks. Um, the things I liked about this so far, uh, I think primarily are that over the first two Space Marine Adventure games, the primary criticism was there was no bad guy models. So while you had these very cool miniatures for the Space Marines, typically, the Space Marine Heroes 1 and 2, you didn't have the villains, so you didn't feel that same tension where there was like a legion of bad guys you know, assaulting you. I even went so far as to build and paint miniatures for Labyrinth of the Necrons to have the Necrons like actually present on the board. Um, and it made a big difference. So this really felt like you were fighting a little miniature war game. It felt, um, there was some tension, the Marines felt mortal. Uh, there was lots and lots of like, what are the cultists gonna do next? Uh, and I really enjoyed it. So we're gonna play through the rest of the two stages. Uh, you'll see them in two more episodes coming up soon. Uh, but this box in particular feels like it has a ton of replay value, especially for playing games with my kids. So this is a nice, simple, exploratory dungeon game. It won't be different every time you play it, which means your kids probably won't get bored of it. Um, and even just to introduce non-miniature wargamers to miniature wargaming, this is enough of a tactical challenge, I think, cooperatively, that it will probably get some folks hooked. And more importantly, it's visually immersive because you have both the good guys and bad guys fighting it out. So I, I absolutely think think that this is so far in the series um, the best of three and I'm really hoping I'm right in that when you have these chapter symbols and the character cards we're going to see some character expansions for this going forward um, leading to allowing more miniatures to be available in the game and maybe more adventures that you have to go and do so different doomsday devices different like missions you have to go through in the same sort of setting uh, and I, I like that this I like that this is a, like a, a, a variable experience that changes over time um, and I'm surprised enough and engaged enough by the, the visual aspect of it that I think it's going to have some legs, especially on my bookshelf at the cottage with the kids. Cash obviously is going to probably lose his mind over this. Um, and I hope that if you get a chance to play it, you enjoy it too. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more Space Marine adventures in the future. Till then I'm Ash. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. 
If you want to support me, continue to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements, like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.